Welcome to the Garden of Favor podcast, where we are committed to cultivating lives and businesses God's way, because when we do, we see the undeniable evidence of His favor. I'm warning you now, be prepared to cry and shout some yeses and amens as we ask ourselves the tough questions and get honest with God about what He wants to do in us and through us for the kingdom. Hi, sister friend, I'm Heather teacher turned six-figure corporate exec turned top 1% network marketer turned living my best life dream job as a mindset strategist and kingdom blueprints coach for Christian entrepreneurs. I believe your life is much like a garden and your business plays a major role in fulfilling your purpose and calling. Are you ready to get your mindset and your heart set in sync with the father so you can bloom into all he's created you to be? Then let's grow girl. Welcome back to the Garden of Favor, episode eight. I am so excited about today because today is super important for what is coming next week. Next week, I'm doing something extra special. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I will be sharing new episodes every day because I am delivering a Bloom Your Brand workshop, a free workshop over in my Facebook community, Garden of Favor Bloom Society. So if you're not in there, get over there because I'm going to be delivering some incredible content to really help you wrap your head around your brand and seeing it the way that God sees it. God walked me through a season where I was like, who am I? Who was I meant to help? How am I meant to help them? You know, often we can go to Instagram and we see that I am a blank. I help this person do this by X, Y, Z. And it seems so easy, but I was really struggling with that. And so the Bloom Your Brand is how God brought me a lot of clarity in my own personal branding, in my own personal business. And I promise you, this is nothing like you've ever heard any other expert in the marketing world teach you. This is completely different. This is very spirit-led. It is a very intimate way that the Lord spoke to me about my business. And I, in turn, realized as I was working with women in my coaching one-on-one that they needed this too. And I'm going to be honest with you, I insecurely shared this with people because I thought, man, this is so outside the box. This is not how the world teaches it. But this really brought me a lot of confidence, uh, aka Godfidence. And it really helps me wrap my head around, even around my business, especially in this season when there's so much noise and people telling you, you know, you should be talking about this stuff, you should be doing that, or you have to stay inside this box. You know, I will always tell you, you have permission to do things differently because you are a child of God. And so this brand, Bloom Your Brand workshop is a very different way to wrap your head around how God sees your brand and what you represent in the, in the marketplace. So if you're not in the in our Facebook community, head over there. But today's episode specifically is about re- reasons why, and I'm going to share with you today four reasons why you not, might not be hearing from God. Because next week, I am going to share with you four specific things that I really feel God wants to reveal to you about your brand so that you are so confident in who you are, what do you do, who do you help, how do you help them, and you answer those questions confidently because God is going to blow your mind with this bloom your brand workshop but in order to be able to do that kind of the groundwork level that needs to be laid before that is that you need to clear those ears sister so that you can hear from god next week so clearly that he's going to speak to you into these oh my goodness in the most beautiful way so today's episode is four reasons why you might not be hearing from god all right, so let's get into it because here is the deal. You know, I talk a lot about, you know, strategy and mindset work, but then these kingdom blueprints. And I I don't even remember the first time I heard somebody say this, God gave me a download. I was like, what? But really, God has given me downloads, especially over the last couple of years about my business. And that requires, when God gives you downloads, that requires hearing God's voice. And I think so often in the business world, we can get so consumed with what the experts tell us that we forget that we can go to God and ask him, what do you want for me? What do you have for me? And I hear from women a lot that say, you know, I don't hear from God. And I've had many seasons in my life where I didn't I didn't feel like I was hearing from God. And over time, God has showed me four really main reasons 
why we don't hear from him. And I want to share these with you today because I want you to clear your ears so that next week when we do the Bloom Your Brand workshop, you have ears that are so open to the heart of your father to really understand what your business looks like to him. And in a kingdom way, what is this calling that he has on your life? So let's get into it. Um, Number one, Okay, why you might not be hearing God's voice. You might not be hearing from God. Before I get into that, I feel like I always have to say that I have never personally audibly heard the voice of God like the men in the Bible have. I've never audibly heard him actually say something, but I do get impressions. God speaks to me a lot through his word. He speaks to me through visions and, and images and through through different things. I mean, I've if you follow me on social, you'll know that God has been showing me feathers for the past, since February. And Psalm 91 is such an incredible verse about he, you know, we are under his wings and the feathers that he continues to drop in my path. Actually, he did one this morning. I was on a walk and I saw a teeny tiny little feather. It's just, a, it's such a sweet reminder. It's a love note that God sends me in the form of a feather to show me and to remind me, I've got you. I'm covering you under my wings, even though the world might look scary right now, or you might have some uncertainties in your life right now. I've got you. You're right under my protection. You're under my wings. And so God speaks to us in all different ways, right? But I'm specifically, you know, wanting to, in all of the ways, right, I'm thinking more of that, the impressions that he gives us, whether he speaks through his word, he speaks through other people, he speaks through music, he can speak through, I mean, so many different ways. But all in all, if you are struggling to hear from God, I don't, I don't know that you will actually hear an audible voice from him, but you will, he will speak to you in so many different ways. But the number one reason or not number one, these are not in any particular order, I should say that, but one of the reasons that we don't hear from God, and perhaps if you're in a season like that, you're you're not hearing from him, is because we don't make quiet time to hear him. Think about it. What do you what is the first thing you do when you wake up? I'll tell you the first thing that I used to do, and then I'll tell you the first thing I do now. Besides, you know, I have my miracle morning routine, which I totally am going to share that on an episode later. I'm going to write that down. Uh, Miracle morning. I'm going to share my, I get asked that a lot and I've done some trainings on it on Facebook live, but I'm going to do an episode on my miracle morning routine. But my miracle morning, besides getting up, going to the bathroom, brushing my teeth and then making my pre-workout drink, you know, I used to, that's, that's part of my miracle morning now, but I used to grab my phone look at the alerts, see, you know, what new text messages I got and potentially what Facebook messages I got, what my email looks like. And before I know it, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour later, I'm laying there distracted by noise, by other things. And I've learned over time that I've wasted a lot of time doing that in the morning. And then I would get frustrated because my kids would get up and I didn't get the amount of time that I wanted to have my quiet time with the Lord. And so Oftentimes, we are too distracted by the noise of the world. And even sometimes it's good stuff. But if we don't create space to hear God's voice and get quiet to hear his, there's a reason why they, you know, the Bible says that he has a still small voice. It's quiet. And if we don't get quiet enough to hear it, we miss it. So number one. I'm going to ask you, when is the last time you have created a quiet space for you to actually hear God's voice? You know, and an extension of that too is, you know, prayer is a two-way street. I think sometimes we think prayer is simply us talking to God and asking him for things and asking for forgiveness or asking for direction or thanking him for, I mean, yes, it is all of those things and it's talking to God, but there's the other part of prayer, which is getting quiet and listening for his voice to actually answer us. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they talk the whole time and you're like, okay, I can't really get a word in edgewise because they're talking. That's often, I think, what we do. And so there's so much noise, whether the world is making the noise or we're making the noise or not creating the space to get quiet and actually hear his still small voice. So I want to challenge you this today and the rest of the, you know this weekend and next week every day really 
make sure you are creating a space to actually hear his voice. And instead of saying he's not talking, make sure that you're creating a quiet place to actually hear it. All right, that's number one. Another reason why you might not be hearing God's voice is because you are filling your mind with other people's stuff. And it might even be good stuff you're filling the the noise with. So for example, I God kind of convicted me of this person, you know, I was like, I want to hear your voice, I want to hear your voice, but on my I would go on these morning walks and they were like an extension of my quiet time, but I was listening to podcast and I was listening to YouTube videos of sermons of pastors, and I was listening to videos on Facebook of, you know, whatever it was, or I was listening to audible books on tape. All those things are great. But I was filling my mind with other people and other things, even good messages and good things, but God kept pressing on my heart and saying, if you wanna hear my voice, then let me speak. And again, God can speak through other people. Don't get me wrong. But again, it's, 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 a, it's are we getting quiet and pausing so that we can actually hear his voice? And so then I started to go on these walks and I would turn on you know, soaking music or instrumental music where it didn't have lyrics, but it, but it has, it's just music. It's simply instrumental. And that really kind of got me in the zone of like, okay, I'm not listening to any words. I'm not listening to anybody else. I'm creating an atmosphere that I want to welcome the Holy Spirit into that's quiet, but that I could hear his voice. And I can't tell you how many revelations I have had on my walks. They become almost a, a daily thing that I crave and desire. It's part of my miracle morning, I would say now. And it, it's such a gift to me to have that extra time with the Lord. Now, it's not to say that I don't ever listen to podcasts, that I don't ever listen to audible books on tape, that I don't ever, you know, sometimes my morning walks are listening to my clients. I use Voxer to communicate with my clients. And so I'm not saying I never do that stuff. Sometimes that's when I get my best coaching out is via Voxer with my clients. And, and that's fine. But I make sure that I am not only listening to other people, that I'm actually listening to God's voice. Yes, he speaks through other people, but he also wants to speak directly to us. So make sure that you are not only filling your minds up with personal development books and videos and podcasts and all the things, but you really are listening for God's voice and his voice alone. So yes, the loud, loud and noisy world, right, that we are just going from one thing to the other, which is, you know, the first tip that I'm giving you is we can get into the car and we listen to this and we do that. It's like, you know, the car is a great place to get quiet and let the Lord speak, but also making sure that you're not just filling up with whether it's good stuff, not so good stuff, but it's not just filling up the, the, the noise. Because let me be honest, quiet can be uncomfortable. If you're not comfortable in silence, then I would pray about that, that there's, there's some, you know, God wants to speak to us in, in when it's quiet, but I would pray about that because I used to have a really big problem with silence. I was like, this is awkward. Silence is awkward, but silence is not awkward because God is always speaking. All right. Another reason why you might not be hearing from God that you is because you didn't listen to the last thing he told you to do. Whoa, this hit me hard when I kept thinking, God, just tell me, just tell me what you want me to do, right? And he told me to rest. I'm like, but why aren't you giving me the next thing? And he said, I want you to rest. But God, why aren't you giving me the, ne you know, the next thing? And why aren't you showing me the path that you want me to go? What, what business do you want me to focus on now? And he's like, because you didn't listen to the last thing I told you, I want you to rest. I want you to stop seeking the thing and seek me. Seek the giver, not the gift. And that spoke to me so much because I thought, goodness gracious, I'm trying, it's like an adrenaline junkie going from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. But God is not going to confuse us. Think about a toddler. I've got a one-year-old now, and you know, my one-year-old, I can, I can only give him one direction at a time. It has to be very clear and it has to be very simple. Now, my six-year-old, I could give him, you know, two things, maybe on a good day, three things to do. You know, go to your room, 
get this, go here. You know, I can probably do two or three commands, but my, my itty bitty, he needs one, one thing. And oftentimes God will only give us one next step, one small thing, because he wants to see, are we one, hearing him, two, are we obeying? Do we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and then a heart to obey? And so God's not going to confuse us with 10 steps of directions. He's oftentimes, he only gives us one command, one thing to do, one thing he's asking. And if we don't obey that one thing, why would he give us the next thing? And so perhaps you need to spend some time and say, God, what was the last thing you told me to do? Did I fulfill that 100%? Was I obedient with that one thing so that then you can give me the next step? So perhaps it's not that he's not talking because he's, you know, he's not mean and he's not trying to stress you out, but it's because he already told you what to do and you didn't listen. And there are definitely times in my life where I have to say, okay, God, what is the last thing you told me to do? Did I listen? Did I fulfill that 100% to the best of my ability? All right. And then the last number four, why you might not be hearing from God. And this is probably, I think one of the, one of the biggest realizations for me out of all those things right of course the loud noise and then listening to other people and maybe you didn't listen to the last thing he told you but perhaps you have something in your life some something something sin let's just, I'm just going to say it sin that you haven't asked for forgiveness for that you haven't repented of and really what sin does is sin separates us from God and I always like to think of this image of a hill and mountains. And the more sin we have in our life, the further away we are from God. God is still there. We are still there. But sin separates us from him. And so there are more mountains in between us and him. And I have this image of God standing on the mountain and, and him speaking, and it's almost as if you know his voice, you know his lips are moving, you know his mouth is moving. He's always speaking. But we can't hear him because we're so far away. And we're frustrated because we can't hear him. And what sin does is it gets us a step closer to him. When we repent, well, when we repent of our sin and we ask for forgiveness, it gets us a step closer. God is holy and perfect. And he wants intimacy with us, but sin keeps us away from him and makes us be further away from him that we can't hear his voice. And so I would encourage you to spend some time in prayer and ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit, just search your heart. What is it that is separating you from God to be able to hear his voice? And, you know, sin, it's, it's that thing that God doesn't, God wants to help us and we will never be tempted more than we can say no, but we're human. We all have sin. And, you know, sometimes God shows me really big things that makes me break down and, and I'm broken because I'm like, wow, I didn't even realize that in my life. Or perhaps I did realize it. And I'm finally to that place where I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to surrender that and stop doing that or, or ask for forgiveness and repent, turn from, you know, turn away from. And sometimes it's small stuff that oh my, I don't even know that I have gone through life thinking that, you know, not trusting God is a form of sin. Or gossip seems so small, but gossip can wreak havoc in people's lives. It's such a, it seems like a small thing, you know, just to talk about somebody or to say something about somebody, but little things, you know, God has convicted me of over, uh, convicted me of over time that impact our relationship and intimacy with him as much as it also impacts our relationship and intimacy with other people think about it when you're when you have turmoil between you and a friend or you and a spouse you don't talk right you don't talk as often because there's that wedge in between well sin is like a wedge between us and god not that he doesn't want it to be there but he needs us to recognize that what we're doing is not holy and not christ-like and not righteous and not of him and that once we remove that then that gets that gives him space to be able to to be you know next to us and be super close and intimate with us so 
I hope that these speak to you in a way, and God continues when I when I start to think, God, I'm not hearing your voice, right? Well, when's the last time you created the space to actually hear from him? Are you creating and carving out that quiet time every single day to hear his voice, reading, reading the Bible and asking him to speak to you through his word? Are you, you know, consumed with too much information from other people that you're not literally creating a space to be able to have the downloads from the Lord that are so unique and perfectly designed just for you, for your heart, for exactly what you need? And then perhaps you didn't listen to that last command or the thing that he asked you to do or suggestion or whatever, that he's like, I'm not going to confuse you. You're, an in, you're a toddler. You're an infant. I'm not going to give you five commands. I want you to go back and do that one. Or the last one, sin. Is there sin? Is it separating you from him? Ask for forgiveness. Change what you're doing. Ask him to help you change change the way that you're, what you're doing or thinking or whatever. And that will get you closer to him. So all of those things are going to be super important for you to be able to hear from God in all areas of life. Whether that's for your family, for your business, for your finances, for your relationships, for your career, and anything, we have to be able to hear God's voice. And so while this is going to play an important role in the Bloom Your Brand workshop that is coming to the podcast next week on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, also you can catch it live in the Garden of Favor Bloom Society if you want to head over there so you can actually get it live in real time with me, then like this is so important to be able to hear that but it has been such a big transformation in my own life and my own business when I started hearing from God regularly like regularly I I hear from him and I talk with him about my life and my family and my business and my my clients and all these things and for me to actually do the work that God has called me to do I have to have an open communication with him and I believe for you to do the work that God has called you to do as a pioneer in this in this season of life you have got to be you know surrendered to to his voice and so in order to do that we have to make sure that we are have constant and open communication with him that nothing is hindering our ability to hear him and hear his voice because I, I again I'm going to say it what he has for you could be very different than what he has for your friend or this other person that you see doing something that you want to do you are a pioneer and he needs to be able to speak to you directly so he can give you specific instructions for you it amazes me when I read about people in the bible who literally God speaks to them and tells them and I was thinking about that this morning I'm reading in first Samuel And just thinking about, you know, I always highlight God said, God spoke. I'm like, that's so fascinating. He has always been speaking since the beginning of time, telling his people what he wants. But if we don't create the space to hear from him, or if we have sin separating us from him, or we are not, we're not um, listening to him over other people, we're going to miss it. So don't miss it. Spend some time today, this weekend, whatever, to prepare for the Bloom Your Brand workshop coming next week on the on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday so that you can be able to confidently answer the questions, what do you do? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? And for you to have this really strong understanding of how God sees your brand, how God sees your business. I promise you it's going to rock your world. It's going to change your life. It's going to make you see your business in a much different way that is going to help you stand boldly and confidently when you're doing a a training or you're posting content or you're having a discovery call with a potential client or you're you know offering a new program or you're whatever it is that you do in your business you're selling something to a client you're going to do it more confidently more boldly because you're going to really have an understanding of this is so much bigger than who's my avatar What am I meant to sell them? How am I meant to make them feel? You know, yeah, those questions are important and those questions are good, but this is going to give you a whole deeper level of understanding of how God sees you and your business. All right. All right. I'm going to wrap this up with a little prayer because that's just what I like to do here on the Garden of Favor. And uh, I can't wait to see you in the Bloom Society Facebook group. Um, Go ahead over there, Garden of Favor Bloom Society, and I will see you for the live workshop and then I'll, I'll 
connect with you back here again and we'll keep this thing going. So Heavenly Father God, thank you. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to be able to have direct communication with you any time that we need you. And we know we need you all the time. So God, I thank you so much for revealing to us some of these reasons why we might not hear your voice. God, you are never holding anything back from us. Perhaps we're not hearing from you because we're not ready for it and, and our hearts aren't prepared for the for whatever it is you have for us and you're, you're preparing us for what you have prepared for us. And God, I pray that whatever that is, is, is removing the sin, removing the noise, removing the distractions that the enemy is so good at putting in our garden and getting in our way, the weeds. God, I pray that every ear that hears this message today takes some time to really reflect on these these tips that could help them start to hear from you better. God, we know that you're always speaking and you're always ready and willing to talk with us and you want nothing more than intimacy with us and you want nothing more than our hearts. God, thank you for that opportunity to have direct access with you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit to help guide us. We love you. And we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.